What if free energy isn't just a dream? Today, I'll show you a core mechanism that might make it possible the magnetic switching motor. It's not fully complete yet, but even at 70% it reveals something powerful. Before we begin, I want to clarify something important. There are two types of magnetic switching motors I've been developing. The first is the reciprocating type, which I'll demonstrate in this video. The second is the rotary type, and that's where the full free energy model can truly emerge. This reciprocating version isn't designed to be a self-running free energy device, but it shares the same core concept and offers a simpler way to understand how magnetic amplification works. So please keep in mind, by showing this first, I hope to give you a clear preview of the mechanism that will power the rotary type model. Let's explore how it works together. Before we dive into the build, here's a visual overview of the magnetic structure and core module. This will help you understand how the motor works as we move forward. This motor is still under construction but the full assembly will be revealed soon. What you're seeing today is approximately 70% of the final build. These are the parts we will assemble and only 70% complete. You'll see how magnetic force is amplified through the parallel path principle. This is a crucial step toward building a fully functional free energy model. Stay curious, more is coming. This is base panel feed installation. Please, watch until step 10. Now I'm mounting the bearing hinge for the moving actuator. Precise hinge bearing installation using a potable bench vise. Each part was precisely machined to a tolerance of 0.01 millimeter. As a result, it took considerable time and expense to complete. This is a test to detect any electrical leakage caused by contact between the coil and nearby metal parts. No leakage was found. It's fine. Magnetic switching core module installation on the base panel. Installing actuator linkages with small bearings using a portable vise. Also, the linkages are structurally embedded into the moving body, ensuring durability under high vibration conditions.
After installing the actuator bodies, I inserted hexagonal driver between left side to ensure smoother motion. Without it, the strong magnetic force makes movement very hard. In this scene, you can see that the right side moving body is tightly attached to the upper iron core. As a result, most of the magnetic flux flows through this side, making the magnetic force on the opposite side relatively weak. This scene demonstrates the following. Two hexagonal drivers are placed between the left and right moving bodies to maintain balanced magnetic force on both sides. However, when the right side moving body is pulled apart with some force, the magnetic flux shifts almost entirely to the left side. The same behavior occurs on the other side as well. This is a close-up view of the mechanism. In this scene, you can see how important torque enhancement is when developing a reciprocating magnetic switching motor. Right now, the moving body is positioned all the way to the left, meaning the flywheel's linker bar has reached its leftmost point and is about to move to the right. But in this position, the starting torque is very weak. To solve this, I added a magnetic flux guiding part to the top of the core module to help boost the torque. Watch the difference before and after. Without this part, the moving body didn't lift on its own. Now, with the added component, it moves as shown, enhancing the drive torque On the other side, it works the same way adding the same part on top of the core module boosts the driving torque. You can check the attached FEM simulation plot to see the result. Now we're installing the flywheel. It helps this reciprocating magnetic switching motor store energy and reduce vibration, so the motor runs more smoothly. The parts that connect it to the core module aren't built yet, but you'll see everything come together in the next video. This limit switch is not suitable for controlling the core module due to design constraints. Its movement direction prevents it from extending the power on duration as required. After running several calculations, dual control signal disks and dual optical switches will be required to achieve the reciprocating motion of the core module. In addition, 
2 PCs high power PWM control. Trigger switch modules are required. What we've learned here can be summarized as follows. Even without powering the control coil, the magnetic force has already increased just as I planned. That's a great sign. Once we add voltage and combine it with the coil's energy, I'm confident we'll get the result we're aiming for. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting this journey. Your comments and encouragement mean a lot. In the next video, I'll show you the fully completed magnetic switching motor in action with all linkages and control systems integrated. If you're curious about what's next, subscribe and stay tuned. Let's explore the future of energy together. Thank you for your watching. Please, subscribe my channel and like.